President and Vice-Chancellor, as public orator, may I present Geoffrey Boachy, a candidate for an honorary degree. If you ask Geoffrey Boachy where he comes from, he will say Brixton in South London. If you were to ask him about his background, he might give you any number of possible answers. For Geoffrey, such questions, on the surface quite simple, but in reality freighted with other meanings and implications, go to the heart of his fascination with words, culture, and identity. Our membership of different groups and tribes in society, the language we use to define ourselves and distinguish ourselves from others. He sees the potential for celebrating disparate cultures as positive, but he recognizes and sharply exposes the ways in which language is used to belittle and repress, putting his work at the forefront of debate about race in contemporary Britain. Geoffrey was indeed born in Brixton, to which his parents had immigrated from Ghana. As we can see, he is quite proud of the connection with Ghana. <laughs> Family is immensely important to him. He acknowledges the important influences from both parents, especially the unswerving guidance and support of his mother, Mary, and, strikingly, the model offered by his two elder sisters, Phyllis and Marcia, as he observed them forging their way in life as young black women. He sees his own greatest achievement as the family he has helped to create as an adult, his wife, Sophie, and their two sons. We are delighted that Sophie, Mary, and both his sisters have joined us today. Geoffrey's education at local primary and secondary schools culminated as deputy head boy of Wimbledon College. Being the only black boy in his sixth form classes was clearly a formative experience. So was learning to manage his stutter, which he came to see as a sort of superpower, driving him to think about the words he used, how he used them, and how he connected with others. The significance of language and culture was brought home to him in other ways. He writes about experiences of his racial identity being highlighted by others, close friends, colleagues, eventually his own students. Geoffrey's love of reading was established early, and from at least the age of 11 he saw himself as eventually working with words. And so he came to study English at this university, describing the study of literature as a portal to worlds, worlds I had never experienced and a way of meeting people I could never meet elsewhere, a way of exploring new thoughts. After Leicester, Geoffrey took the PGCE at King's College London. Since then, he has gone on to establish himself both as an inspirational teacher and as one of the most effective and imaginative analysts of the use of language today. His own taste in reading ranges from the established so-called canon of English literature, he would probably take Wuthering Heights if stranded on a desert island, to the works of his contemporary young black writers. He is a voracious consumer of culture in all its forms. He is also an outspoken and persuasive advocate of the study of literature, defending it from those who would divert provision to subjects which are supposedly more practical and vocational. Geoffrey taught English at a large school in West London before becoming head of English at a progressive free school in Stratford, East London. He has given guest lectures for his old department here and taken part in the Literary Leicester Festival. Not surprisingly, he has been an alumnus of the year. He has recently joined the University of Manchester as a senior teaching fellow, where his role includes giving guest lectures and mentoring individual trainee teachers. His idealism undiminished, his greatest wish is that education in this country could be reformed to prioritize creativity over formal assessment, making it a pleasure for both teachers and taught. In parallel with his teaching career, in the last few years, Geoffrey has published extensively. His first book, Hold Tight, Black Masculinity, Millenniums and the Meanings of, Meaning of Grime, 
published in 2017, is a loving critique of grime music and an investigation into life as a black man in Britain today. This was followed by Black Listed, Black British Culture Explored, a sort of personal dictionary exploring the ways in which black communities are described, an inventory of categorizations, names, phrases, and insults, which is also, as one reviewer put it, a comprehensive yet concise exploration of black identity. Musical Truth, a musical history of modern black Britain in 28 songs, was nominated for the Librarians Association's Carnegie Medal, the only non-fiction title ever to be nominated for this award. Most recently, in the best-selling I Heard What You Said, Jeffrey examines the underlying habits, presumptions, silences and distortions that inform the educational system as experienced by black students and teachers, and illustrated in phrases he has heard all too often, like, are you really a teacher? Have you ever been to prison? And can you rap? Due Out Soon is a children's story, Kofi and the Rap Battle Summer, which, in, which will challenge negative stereotypes of black masculinity and celebrate the joy of growing up in a black community. Musical World, also out this year, is an exploration of power and politics through history via popular music. So, yes, Jeffrey does love rap and hip-hop. Music of many kinds is very important to him, and he co-hosts the award-winning BBC radio programme Add to Playlist, which explores the connections between five ostensibly very different pieces of music every week. Jeffrey's not afraid of challenge and stress, arguing that they can be productive. This was certainly reflected in his courageous decision to join our celebrity alumni team in Christmas University Challenge 2021. They went down to an honorable defeat to Edinburgh University, but not before Geoffrey had demonstrated an impressively diverse knowledge of pork pies, proletariat, and Pinocchio. In the 1950s and 60s, one of the leading lights of this university in its early days was Richard Hoggart. His major work, The Uses of Literacy, broke new ground in its examination of British popular culture and the impact of the mass media of the time. It is no exaggeration to say that Hoggart's mantle has fallen on Geoffrey Boachie, who is vividly and energetically illuminating the way in which language, music, and other forms of culture have shaped and are changing the nature of our diverse 21st century society. Truly, a citizen of change. Mr. President and Vice-Chancellor, on the recommendation of the Senate and the Council, I present Geoffrey Kojo Boachi, that you may confer on him the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters. Take it up there, yeah, yeah. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, um, thank you so much. That was hearing your CV read out like that, you know, over a prolonged few minutes is quite overwhelming. You realise how hard you're working, and I've got no idea what's in this tube either. Um, I, I, I haven't opened it yet, um, but I'm hoping that I can stick it on my wall when I get home. Listen, that's a lot of recognition for what I've done, what I'm working on, because I'm only 40, you know, I'm getting started, there's more to do, lots done, and I just want to start with some recognition for you lot. Um, all the people that smiled and nodded, well done, that was very polite of you, you know, when you shook hands. The people that did the praying hands, that was very, very serene. Um, the people that did the Ronaldo um, jump and step back, yeah. You're having a good time, aren't you? Yeah, there are like four of you, I counted. Well done, well done. Um, I feel like in my 40 years, the wisdom I've got, actually, I've only been wise for about three years, so my three years of wisdom, I've learned something, which I feel like I've cracked it. There are two types of people in the world. 
Just two. People who believe in you and people who you believe in. I think that's it. And sometimes those people are the same people. Like when I look at you with my teacher hat on, this is not my teacher hat, this is, let me take it off, this is another hat, with my teacher hat on, I see you all as the students that walked into my classroom and that first day in year seven, age 11 years old, I see you as little people with a whole future ahead of you that you don't know and I don't know, the potential. And as a teacher, you have to believe in everyone that walks into your classroom, you have to. And you believe in people, right? The people around you. And people believe in you. That's the powerful part. Some of them are up there already. Professor Emma Parker. Look at her, she's blushing. Without, without her, yeah, you, have you guys never done this before? Professor Emma Parker. Give her a little ripple. That was a forced round of applause, I do apologise. Without whom, um, I'm not sure if I'll be here right now. One of my lecturers, when I was an undergrad, who has made this happen in part. Thank you, Emma, you believed in me. My sisters, Marcy and Phyllis. I've got two older sisters. If you haven't got two older sisters, I recommend getting two older sisters as soon as possible. <laughs> All right? I swear to you, it's like a cheat code for how to get on in life, because I saw the world through their eyes. They were going through the world as young black women, and they were doing their GCSEs and their A-levels, and they did the stuff that you're doing. I did English, I was all right. They did like microbiology, biotechnology, all the long subjects that you guys have done. That's what they were up to. And I was inspired by them. They believed in me, I believe in them. My mum, my mother, Mary, Mary Bwachi. I mean, yeah. I won't go into it, but let's just say that when I was an undergrad here, there were a few times when I called my mum on a landline before mobile phones, asking for £300 to be wired through immediately, and it happened. That's because she believes in me. She's working on the same project I am, and it's all for you, mum. Seriously. And of course... <laughs> it's all right, yeah. <laughs> it's true, though. She'll put this on her wall before I get a chance to, so yeah. Um, and of course, my, my, my wife Sophie, my partner in everything. My two kids are not here, Finley and Blake, but Sophie's here. And I believe in her more than she believes in herself, I think. And she obviously believes in me, you know? But we've done a lot of clapping today. You guys are very, very generous. Um, my last book was called I Heard What You Said. And when I think about it, it's quite a clever title. Sorry to give myself even more accolades, but it's quite a clever title because it's about listening to the world. The world is speaking to you the whole time. Think about it. The world's telling you what to do, how to act. It's giving you challenges. It's speaking to different parts of your identity, right? It speaks to you as a man, as a woman, to your ethnicity, to your race, to your status, to the fact that you've come from an immigrant background like so many of us. And the world is saying things to you that you have to respond to. And you know what? You lot are all speaking back. Like, have a second to think about everyone in this room. You've made choices about who you're going to be, what you're going to put into the world, and that is a response. And it's a good response. That's why we're celebrating. That's why we're wearing the robes. You're responding to the world. To become biochemists and thermostatic heat technicians, and that's all I can remember from what I heard. All right, there are loads of jobs, but you are responding. And I just think the last thing I want to say is, um, it sounds cheesy, but it's true. I believe in you. You know, I believe in you. I hope that you believe in me. Because in a few years, if everything goes to plan, you're going to be looking at TV when I'm on Strictly Come Dancing, going like, that guy was, oh, him, it was him. Wow, he's done really well. You know, so believe in me, please, because Leicester's a big part of all of our story. It's a huge part of our story. So thank you again to everyone that's made this happen. And thank you to everyone in the room right now because we're on a journey and yeah, let's go smash it, yeah? Let's put our hats on. <laughs>